grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We rejoice and celebrate when someone wins, especially someone we know and like or who belongs to our circle. And we pity and sometimes even mock a little bit those who lose, especially someone we don't like or who belongs to an opposing team or a group of people that we consider our adversaries. This is true in sports and it's true in life as well. Those who succeed are admired and often envied. Those who fail professionally or privately can at best count on pity. Losers do not often become role models for others because who wants to or likes to be a loser? Peter, too, feared that he was among the losers when Jesus announced to his disciples that he would suffer much and be killed. Peter did not travel, did not journey along with Jesus to see Jesus fail. That Jesus had failed if he were to be killed, that was the agony that Peter was trying to wrap his brain around at that time. He had seen many people come to listen to Jesus, even though the elite Jewish people considered Jesus a heretic. Others came. And now, should the opponents of Jesus be able to triumph over him? That must not happen, said Peter, and I imagine so would say we. Therefore, he protested when Jesus announced to the disciples what he was about to face. But Jesus sharply corrected Peter. He said, go away from me, Satan. You do not mean what is divine, but what is human. Satan in the Bible is a figure who wants to tempt people away from what God has called them to be and to do. With his own protest, Peter had become a tempter of Jesus, who wanted to divert him from the right path. Yet Peter had thought only as people think. Who can imagine, who can imagine that someone who is ridiculed and killed is not a loser? But Jesus is thinking differently. God had come into this world, born into a stable as Jesus. God had not done that to show people how powerful he is rather that he was and is concerned with being connected to humanity, with dwelling among us. Jesus came into this world and died on the cross so that all who believe in him are connected and remain in that connection with God. Therefore, in our sermon text today, Jesus announced to his disciples that he must suffer. He must be killed. He must rise again. He had to do this because he was doing the job. He was acting the actions that he had received from God. The way people behave on their own, we are not very lovable, are we, to God? The love that God has for us is, so, is based solely on the fact that God wants to be connected in a loving way to us. This love is so big that God even takes it upon God's self to be a loser, to be a loser in the public's eye, to be a loser in the eyes of the world. Even now, all these many years and decades and centuries later, many people do not realize that they can have a good relationship with God through the power of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. 
In today's gospel, Jesus announces that same resurrection that will happen after three days. But we know of only a few people through all the gospel readings that we have, we know of only a few people to whom he appeared after that resurrection. Most people at the time he lived thought he had failed, done, over, finished. And today, even today, many people still think so. When they hear or they read about Jesus, they think, yeah, he failed. For Christians, however, the cross of Jesus, the cross of Jesus is a sign of victory, a victory that is won over guilt and death. And because we believe in Jesus, we are among the victors that stay, that are connected to God in life and beyond our own death. But it doesn't look that way necessarily to the general population out there, right? But Jesus says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. The demand, this is a demand of Jesus, is to deny ourselves. This does not correspond to anything that makes any kind of sense in our world, in our time. Rather, it's more often believed that one can succeed for oneself. One can realize each of our own potential by ourselves. And aspiring to excellence certainly isn't a bad thing. It isn't a bad thing for people. It isn't a bad thing for companies. It isn't even a bad thing for the church. But there are limits to the desire for self-realization as Christians. If we really want to realize our desires and optimize our abilities, our gifts, our talents, we still, we still have to lay those desires and those abilities at the foot of the cross. What we can achieve ourselves must not drive away our reliance on our Lord. Listen to what Jesus says. What will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Our transient happiness from our human accomplishments fades away when we die. But Jesus died and rose again to receive eternal life from God through him and that we might receive it. Sometimes it is difficult for us, I know it is for me, for the sake of our faith, to give up our wishes and our desires to deny ourselves. I don't want to be considered foolish, or maybe what is worse, old-fashioned. That hurts a little more every year. But that happens again and again when we are open about our faith in Jesus. It happens that in a conversation with a group of people, someone suddenly says, what a bunch of foolishness, those people who go to church every Sunday. What a waste. I prefer to sleep or golf or hike or sunbathe, depending on where you live, on Sunday. And others nod in agreement or even chime in about how foolish and not modern at all church life is. What do we do? What do we say? Our lives are not threatened by being Christians for the most part in this day and age. But when I open my mouth and I say, I'm a Christian and most Sundays I can be found in church. I know many who smile that little pitying smile that says, poor you, you're living in the past. And they maybe don't respect me as much. Should I risk that? Or do I remain silent? Let the other voices proclaim what the successful happening thing to do is. You may not have experienced it exactly this way. 
but probably each of us has been in a similar kind of situation. There are many occasions when we, if we are wide awake Christians, where we hear those opinions that belief in Jesus and in the Christian church are redundant or even harmful. Then we are faced with the question of whether we are ready. Are we ready to accept the cross of contradiction or even amusement from other people? If we believe in Jesus and want to follow him, we must remain recognizable as Christians. Recognizable as Christians, even if our faith is belittled. Maybe if it is contra contradicted. For to whom the good opinion of others is more important than one's faith in Jesus, if that's the case, we will not enter into eternal life. And this is the whole reason Jesus came and lived and died and rose again. But on the other hand, we are assured that whoever accepts the cross of being made a fool of for this belief will receive eternal life. Jesus says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves. Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. I pray for the courage and the faith to follow Jesus each and every day. Amen.